we get bored in the salon because we're never trying anything new. If you stay educated, it gets you excited. It gets you wanting to try something new. You try that new thing on your guests, then all of a sudden you have a higher average ticket. What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast, the Matt Beck podcast. I got a special guest today. Uh, my pal Jason Everett uh, is here. So excited to talk to him. I never get that stupid intro music synced up right. Whatever. This is how I woke up, I guess. So uh, excited to talk to Jason. We got a ton of really cool uh, topics to talk about. Uh, before I do that, Thank you to MinervaBeauty.com for being the sponsor of this podcast. Uh, they have a fly-in program, so uh, everyone should have the opportunity to experience Minerva Beauty equipment in person. That's why they designed the Minerva Beauty fly-in program. They reimburse your airfare up to $350 when you purchase $5,000 or more uh, of equipment, and also a car service will pick you up from the airport and bring you to Minerva. You got to check out there. If you're in, if you're seriously in the uh, in the market for new furniture, which I personally think you should upgrade your salon every couple of few years because um, things go stale, styles change. We're in the fashion kind of up forward thinking business. So I think uh, you should always be looking at that. Minerva has affordable prices and you can see everything for yourself, buy it there and it gets shipped quickly and right away. So go to minervabeauty.com backslash FSE uh, for details on all of that and to get a nice discount uh, on your purchase as well. So, um, got Jason Everett on the show today. I love having guests first off, and I love having this guy as a guest because we get to talk business. We get to talk, uh, you know, I just love having people on here that are smarter than me for sure. Uh, when it comes to just different things with marketing and, uh, and then I learn things. So Jason, thanks for being on here. Thanks for upgrading your, uh, camera equipment. And <laughs> That's the other thing I said uh, to Christina this morning. So upgrade she, everything, bro. Yeah. So I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing the podcast with Jason today. She goes again. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I, first off, Jason's easy because I know that you got like the tech thing and like, we just log on and talk and it's, it's simple. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, this is the once a month Jason and Matt show kind of here. So uh, I like it. I like I'm it. excited to hear what you're up to. Um, those of you guys that don't know who Jason is, he owns a company called High Performance Salon. Uh, it's an academy. It's a, it's a lot of things, right? You do your business coaching. Yeah, um, dude. It's so training for it's training for salon owners, commission salons, and uh, helping people, you know, really like actually turn their salon into a business. That's the, that's our jam. Yeah. So, um, and it's cool because if any of you guys have questions, and I know you guys are are logging on, I can see all the chats on all the different social media platforms. Um, if you guys have questions about Anything salon related from a business standpoint, Jason's your guy and uh, it's free of charge today. So, um, so take advantage of that <laughs> right in the comments yeah, as much as you can, because uh, he definitely, ha he knows his way around, especially commission salons. So I know that's your kind of your big focus. Um, and those mm -hmm. are the salons that you work with. And, and you, I just saw that you were uh, maybe launching a podcast. Is this true? Or were you just asking? Yeah, dude. Should? No, no, for real, like legit. Um, we we actually have uh, already filmed and recorded uh, about I think it's like ten episodes or something like that. So, dude, okay. I'll have you on my reverse Matt Best Matt Beck Inception podcast. You know, you'll be on my podcast as podcast. But, um, yeah. dude, yeah, we have a new podcast coming out. It's called the Salon Owner Evolution Revolution. It's about all the latest in technology that keeps you up to date with what to do inside your salon. Everything from you know, there's some really cool things that we're interviewing people on, on, on like new tech tools to have, uh, people, you know, find the perfect stylist inside your salon. There's some new cool things out there with tech where people are like interacting with digital mirrors and we're bringing in all the latest, coolest new stuff is going to be on that podcast about how to keep up with the changes inside the salon industry from a business standpoint. Right on. That's cool. And, uh, yeah. and you were Long doing, day. I mean, you April were, 1st. is it April 1st? Okay. And you were doing a April podcast. 1st, no joke. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> that, that actually, uh, that's hilarious. And like that? It, yeah, like that was that? good. Um, so Thanks. it's cool that you're going to do a consistent thing and it's kind of got its own brand. Now you were doing, um, cause I was on your podcast 
before. Well, um, it, we, we were doing a show called Lessons with Legends, and it was on, yeah. we had it on YouTube and on Facebook. We just never had an official, like, go on to iTunes or Spotify and find our podcast. We had it amplified everywhere except for through podcasts. So, yeah, you've been on. We've done tons of video digital shows that were similar to that, but now it's officially okay. as a audio version audio. as well. Sweet. Yeah. Very cool. Well, and video and everything else, but yes, totally. So, um, so the first thing we're going to jump right into, uh, obviously answering questions. That's what we do on this podcast and, uh, trying to give mm-hmm. the people watching as much as we can. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is this good old, um, you know, and I pulled up this video, this was kind of a, <laughs> a, a meme so that's, that's been going around or a, a GIF or GIF or whatever. Um, but it's literally a, a guy you know, using sticks with a comb on one end and a clipper on the other. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have seen this uh, going around, but it's the reality. And I know it's a reality because I thought about talking about it. And then um, we had this guy, um, Drake828 on Instagram said, in regards to the current health situation, um, how would you suggest having a client exit the salon if they are visibly sick? So, I thought that this was like kind of an interesting topic to to bring up because of the fact that you know we're in this state of you know the salon industry being a people industry so we're constantly Mm -hmm. have our hands on people and they're saying the biggest thing to do with this you know virus is to wash your hands uh you know if you are sick don't go out in public so you know i have my thoughts i know you have your thoughts why don't you start um, oh, so yeah. I don't take up the airwaves sure. and just, you know, Dude. let us kind of in. I mean, look, I, first, I, first of all, I want to say this is not a topic. It's the topic right now. And yeah. I don't think in a good way, it's the topic. And, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, I've done a lot of research into this because I wanted to be educated on it for just a lot of different reasons. And, and dude, yeah. there's a like full out, if you want to go down the like I'm just gonna say this for all my conspiracy theory homies. There's like the giant conspiracy theory deep dive that you could go down with this. I don't yeah. want to do that on today's show, but what I do want to talk about is the reality of being around uh, people that are sick inside the salon, because yeah. you know the reality and the numbers of like what the coronavirus is specifically doing uh, in the states. Th- there's a whole you know you can you can look into the stats on that on your own. Like do your own research because all I'll do is piss people off if I start spouting off my opinion on that. But yeah. What I will say is that the reality of, let's just say whether it's a flu or it's strep throat or it's anything else, what is the salon's policy? And I always talk to like the salon owners, right? So in my mind, I always say, think about it from a salon owner perspective down. If you work inside a salon and there's no policy in place for what do you do when clients are sick, well, that's going to be a problem because you as a stylist can't enforce your own rules over your guests if the salon general umbrella policy is different, right? If Because I know this happens, right? It's like you have a hair yeah. appointment and you, you know, there's somebody who wants to get their hair colored and they've been on the list you're, and you pre-booked them. They're like pre-booked like 10 months in a row. And then they come down with a illness because their kids were sick. And then they're like, I have to get my hair dyed because I'm going to, you know, it, I'm, it's the one thing that I need. So you text and you're like, I'm really sick today, but I need to get my hair done because I've been on your waiting list for a month. Like, you want to go get your haircut. I, I get that from a client perspective. And as a, yeah. as a stylist in the salon, you're like, no way, stay the hell home. I don't want you to be like, don't, don't infect me with whatever you have. Right. Which by the way, is probably not going to be coronavirus plug, plug, any plug, but let's just say it's anything else that could be going on right now. And the reason why I'm going to, uh, my only stand I'll get on is like, please stop watching the damn news. Can I just say that? Like the news is designed yeah. to tell you everything bad that scares you. And so the, it, like when it infiltrates everything, like everything of your day to day, it just means the news is winning right now because they found a topic that everybody's scared of. So they get to talk about it. Like, Wait, let's just start there. Okay. The perfect example of this. Did you watch the guy do the tight rope walk last night? <laughs> did you watch that? No, no, totally not. Okay. Uh-uh. No. So where was that at? I got sucked in because this guy Did decides- they talk about the coronavirus as he was going across the thing? Because that's very possible. <laughs> no, no. Well, they didn't, which was surprising. But the funny thing is surprising. like, it's just one of those things where um, they amplify what's about to happen. And I'm not saying a tightrope walk oh, dude, over a, yeah. an active volcano is is an easy thing. Sure. But I'm like, I'm pumped. And I'm like, oh, I want to watch this. 
I set to record, you know, we got home and I'm like, I paused it. So we are all ready sitting on the couch, like ready to watch this man walk across the volcano could fall in. Amazing. Not right. Yeah. So it's intense. Danger. He has a safety cord on his back. So he tightrope walks, but it's like if I take my kid to the local, like climbing thing and they safety attach me, like I understand it's <laughs> yeah. more extreme, yeah. but they build things up and they're like, you know, they're talking about yeah. all these fumes that he can breathe in and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, so it's just like, that's what they do. Everybody blows everything up. Now, my biggest fear, and Christina made fun of me today because she's, she always carries around like sanitizing, like hand things, yeah. right? Um, wiping Hayden's hands, her hands, all that. And I'm always like, I'm, I'm fine. I'll wash my hands whenever, but like, I don't need to I'll do the survive. extra. Or we'll, we'll get on a plane <laughs> yeah. and she'll wipe the whole the whole thing down. So today, <laughs> yeah, today the, we the, get <laughs> everything, the side, the window. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this morning we go to Walmart and pick up a couple of things before we come into work. And as we're walking out, she goes, I have, she's like wiping her hands. And she goes, do you want to wipe your hands? And I'm like, yeah, please. <laughs> I'll take one. Yeah, and let's, like, let's hook it up. it's mm -hmm. not because I think I'm going to get like, I'm sure it's a possibility or whatever. And I, and I've started to read about the coronavirus and like, it's not, you know, it's not the killer that everyone is, you know, making it out to be, but like, it's not, the I don't want to be the bro. guy with it either. So like, I don't want to like have to sit in my house. So like now I'm like, okay, but what is your thought? Like when somebody's visually sick, because that's where like just in general, because I don't think we should change things just because of the coronavirus. Like, I think what you're saying Correct. is like in a salon, you should have a policy. Um, and yeah, as a I would say what, go ahead, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Jump in. I, I, I was just going to say like the whole, the whole thing is, is what is your general policy for people being sick? Because yes, I mean, is it possible that you could, you could get sick from somebody having the flu or a strep throat or measles or whatever, whatever other thing is possibly going on from anything else that could exist on planet earth at any given time. What is your salon's policy for people that are sick? And for example, what you may do as a course of like, I, I just don't like to change things for like what the news says. I like to change things for like, what should our policy be? And in general, yeah. I think a salon's policy should be at the beginning of the cold and flu season, message people and say, look, I know you love getting your hair done and that missing an appointment would be a huge problem for your schedule and for your life. However, we do ask inside our salon that if you are showing signs of being visibly sick, like to where you wouldn't go to work or you wouldn't actually go and interact with other people, that you understand that we work so closely with you that we will do everything in our power to reschedule you at a time when you're feeling better. Like yeah. that's a great thing to do at the beginning of cold and flu season. If you want to take the extra step and put a sign up at the front desk that just said, um, you know, we understand it's cold and flu season. And so if you visibly feel sick or need to, you know, if you're blowing your nose on a regular basis, we'd like to ask for you to reschedule your appointment. We'll work with you to do so. Like, I don't think that's weird. And I think, by the way, I think it's very healthy for you to have things like hand sanitizer inside the salon in general, maybe even at your workstation so that as you're working with the guest, if you're feeling a little weird, you can at least take care of it. But it shouldn't be because some, you know, and I, I think take this news piece as just a way to update your cold and flu policy. Yeah, that's good. I like you know what I'm saying? You, uh, because, yeah. because, because here, because dude, I get on planes all the time. Like I'm going to Nashville tomorrow, right? We're, we got 115 uh, commission salon owners flying into Nashville to do one of our huge hoopla's, you know? And like, it's a, it, well, I say huge hoopla's. It's a big deal, intimate group, right? Yeah. And so what, what, the reason why we do that is that um, we're, we're getting together, we're hanging out, but here's what happens. Like there was a tornado, like real story. There was a tornado in Nashville this week and it was a real tornado that like wrecked buildings and like, um, and, and literally there were people who passed away in this tornado, which is, it's just not a good thing, but here's what can happen. Um, as soon as people heard that, they're like, well, you, you're probably canceling your trip to Nashville, right? Because there was tornadoes in Nashville. And I'm like, I mean, look, there's stuff that happens all over the world every single day. Yeah. Like there was probably car accidents on the way to work where somebody died, not, not discounting by the way that somebody yeah. died, but like there's car accidents every day where somebody dies. 
There are people getting sick that then pass away. Like I have family members who are who are really sick that could be very affected by anything. You know, I, my dad who's on uh, dialysis, by the way, shout out to my my amazing dad. But like he's on dialysis, he's going to the hospital for all this stuff. And like my kids were sick, so we went. I went to go down there. And I didn't bring my kid who was sick a week ago because I was concerned and want to be alert. I want to be tuned into yeah. those things. But if I stop my life for news, that's not good. And I think yeah. part of it is like when you're watching this stuff and you see a meme like that or whatever, people like, you know, people freak out and panic and they're like, oh my God, if I see a client blow their nose or they're kind of itchy when they're there or whatever, like I could die. And then it becomes they're all consumed. And here's the problem. You're now focused on that instead of on your guest, which yeah. how good is that for you, your business of running behind the chair, you know, for being able to sell retail sales, to be able to serve them. You're like, how quickly do I get out of here and do I sanitize my my equipment the second they leave like you went to beauty school and you learned proper precautions for how to handle the equipment and gear tighten yeah. up that precaution pay attention to it and put out make sure your salon has a policy on people that are sick and they send it out and if you really want to go out of control above and beyond like dude i, I go to a, a church around here that um in sacramento and they they actually i thought like they they uh dealt with this very elegantly this weekend they said listen we know this stuff is in the news. We usually have you like turn and shake hands with people and say, hey, we're probably going to lose that for a couple of weeks. And here's what we're also doing. We're putting hand sanitizer out front. We're, wipe, we're wiping down the place extra, probably because we should anyway. And we want to let you know, don't freak out, but just be aware we're taking extra precautions. And we would love for you to too, but don't, don't let the news be the thing. And I'm like, I feel the same yeah. way. Dude, you yeah, want to throw good. some extra hand sanitizer on? Bro, knock yourself out. Throw some extra hand sanitizer. If it makes you feel good, you're probably not going to get the coronavirus. Uh, I please feel free to run this video in the event that you do get it, and I will eat my words. But <laughs> I, I don't wish that on anyone. And what I would just say is, you're probably not going to get it, but don't let that be a panic. And by the way, don't let that be your discussion with your guest in the chair instead of about why they came in, what they're there for, how you can make right. them feel amazing, and how you can. Your job as a stylist is to reduce their stress. Yes. From things like watching the news, not let their stress eke into the salon. For sure. So, or did I soapbox okay on that? Just be like this guy and you can do it this way. That, that is the other. And Matt, I don't know why you would let your employees use those kind of sticks. I thought you would have had them use something fancier or at least nope. some black duct tape on those clippers, bro. I, I thought for sure. No, straight up. I will say though. <laughs> That I like if you look at that, that is the most staged thing. And I say that because the dude's wearing like the like super cool mask and like it's clearly for meme purposes only. Like, I think oh, it's totally for meme purposes. Yeah. In entertaining. Yeah. But yeah. but but here's the problem. People don't understand that. Right. They just think like like you this and guy's I can go like stage really... that photo and have things take over. Like, yeah. I, you know, that's that's the entertaining thing. And then it sweeps through because people get silly about um about, you know, all, all these things. So anyway, that's I my advice. I don't know if that's helpful for you. Is but, he selling clippers in the background? Like, does it look like he he's probably selling? probably is. Yeah, he's retailing. <laughs> new, new yeah. uh, zero percent <laughs> uh, viral clippers. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, um, so that's where- Does that help? Does that feel good? I think so. A couple people. So we have some questions coming up. Um, one thing I think that you'd probably be good at answering is, and we, we did talk about this last time, actually. How do you handle sick employees yeah. making up guests? So that's one- aspect. So if you reverse it, yeah. um, and then what is a good policy for sick service providers when, yeah, when rescheduling is super hard. So uh, a couple different people, Mary and Heather. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so again, think I think it goes that? back to like, what's, what's the policy, bro? Like, I mean, I think that's part of it is like, you know, my kids, when they go to school, there's a policy about when they should stay home. Like, I mean, it's literally like if they've had a fever within 24 hours, if they have, uh, like I know it sounds gross, but like if they have, you know, colored mucus, <laughs> you know, or they've thrown yeah. up within 24 hours, like, but that's the real deal is like, what's your policy? So is it like you couldn't have had a fever within 24 hours or 48 hours? You know, if you have visible mucus, if you're whatever, like those should be reasons for your staff to stay home. And I would also echo the same sentiment is that, again, your policy for your staff should be your policy with your guests, right? Like, here's our yeah. staff sick policy, which we apply for you. We want to keep everybody healthy this cold and flu season. So here's our policy, and we'll do our best to get people rescheduled as much as possible. Now, here's what I would say, because I would handle this whole, like, getting guests rescheduled on people's policy in a way that will probably piss some people off on this call or on this video call slash podcast slash everything. But, like, yeah. here's what I would say. 
I encourage in the salons that I work in, which, which by the way, if you're independent stylist, this may not apply to you. So that's why I said it's going to be a little different. But what I would say is if you work in a, in a salon with multiple people, this is an amazing opportunity for them to have an experience with another stylist, right? Yeah. It's an amazing opportunity. Now you might go, oh, but if that other stylist works with them and they cut their hair better than I do, then they're going to go and leave and go to that other person. That's your own trash, man. Get out of your own head. If you're so worried that your 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 uh, guest could have one experience with one other hairstylist and leave you for life, that's the wrong idea. That so we, is... we have a salon in our um, High Performance Salon Academy. Shout out to uh... oh, go ahead, man. Oh no! Wow, we have a major delay. Um, so I that's yeah, just like a good a big that's one. a good point to yeah that's a good point to bring up because um that's where a lot of stylists like. There's like this weird insecurity within the salon industry. And, and it, it drives me nuts because the reason clients leave your chair is because they're not getting something that they wanted. So if you're sick, like you said, and you go and your client goes to somebody else and they stay with that person, you should reflect on yourself and say, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Why would that guest want to go somewhere? If there's a, a client that's constantly, um, like canceling last minute and they're canceled, like they're constantly canceling on you. The reason is because that's not an exciting thing for them. So we, we have to figure out, we have to readjust the conversation just like you're saying to um, stylists need to be less insecure and start really focusing on what is important, which is the guest experience and not worrying yes. about anything else. Like if you don't worry about anything else and you totally. just focus on that person, you will never lose that person. Look at this guy. Totally. By the way, my, my camera freaked out. I'm coming back. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Wait, you yeah, just back had four to heads. Tech, bro. Yeah. Back to tech. <laughs> I know. It happens. Right. I'm back. It was, it was, it, it. that's called a pattern interrupt, by the way. It's a pattern interrupt. Um, oh, nice. So, dude, I 100% agree with you. I 100% agree with you. And, and what I would just say as you look at all these things is like, is are you focused on the guest or focused on yourself? And, you know, props out to uh, my girl, Lindsay Haney, over at the Style Lounge in Austin, Minnesota for this, by the way. This is 100% her idea. She has a, a card that they have inside their salon called the Get Around card, okay? And we brainstormed right. this and came up with it and helped her out with it. And I don't know if I mentioned this on your show before, Matt, but basically what they do is they encourage, and she has a, a salon, I don't know how many people she's up to now, maybe seven, 10 people. It's not a huge salon, but uh, but still a strong size, right? And she um she said we look i want you to meet other stylists inside of our salon because in the event that your stylist is sick or has any issues or you can't get on their books there should be a couple other people inside our salon that could also serve you really really well and we encourage our guests to meet with other clients now that could go from like you know so and so is really good at color versus cutting versus this technique versus that technique versus blowout but it also especially if you have a spa for crying out loud the more your clients and customers can interact with multiple points inside the salon the more they become a guest of the salon rather than a guest of one single stylist. And I think sometimes to your point, stylists get so insecure that they have this, like we used to call it a uh, stranglehold accounts when I used to work in radio advertising. It was yeah. basically like your person that you were so afraid if you lost them, you would freak out because it would cost you so much money and whatever is that you held onto them so tightly you would choke them. Yeah. Right. That's a, and yeah. you don't want to have stranglehold accounts. You don't want to have people that you're like, I'm going to hold on to you for dear life for fear that you would leave me. Like who wants to be in that relationship? Like if that was me and my wife, charity, it'd be the same thing. Like I can't, I can't strangle her to make sure she never leaves me. Like I'm pretty sure she's going to go out tomorrow and see other guys walking down the street. This is a weird direction for me to go, but I'm just saying, let's say that she, you know, like in a spouse relationship, you just want to be such a great spouse that your spouse would never want to leave you. Same thing. How do you become better as a stylist so that right. you're secure enough that if they did go to somebody else, you'd be cool with that because it's just yeah. a temporary haircut. Like that, that's, yep. you know, I think that's anyway, that was a weird analogy, but you get my point. Yeah, I totally get your point. And that's the thing too. Like when you look at uh, the one uh, question was, how do you get to rebook them? So let's say they don't go to somebody else, but you're 80%. She's saying you're 80% booked. Well, if you're 80% booked, you're not fully booked. So automatically you have space yeah. that you have, you know, 20% of your time is uh, not busy. So, so let's you say, can get let's say in. your free time is during the day when they can't come in, blah, blah, blah. How do you do it? Yeah. Do you know what I want to, I want to spin this to another question because it was the next, wait, did I see this question or I don't know. Did we have a question about raising prices too? Wasn't that a question you wanted to bring we up? We did. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull that. Yeah. So let me parlay to that parlay. Let me transfer what I'm saying to this question. Um, if you're 80% booked, guess what it's time to do? 
Yep. Here. Raise your prices. Yeah. Raise your prices. That's what it's time to do. So by the <laughs> way, if you're fully booked, if your book's solid, if you've got all that stuff going on, and by the way, it's called capacity utilization. If you're at 80% of your capacity and your book's solid and nobody can get on your schedule, especially when they reschedule, what that's a symptom of is that you're undercharging for what your value is. Right. Okay. Exactly. So what that means is, is that you're, you're undercharging, which is good, by the way, you got to start somewhere and then continue to grow that and build that up. So as the way, you hit 80%, that's actually your trigger point to raise your prices. Enough. Pe there's not enough people out there that underprice themselves. I think more people need to underprice themselves. They do. I, I, the, the biggest <laughs> yeah, question totally. I get every single day, the biggest question is how do I build a book? The reason you're not building a book is because you're charging too much. You know what I mean? Huh? Like a good you point. would yeah. it, until you have the challenge where you're now writing and you're saying to me now I'm, yes. I'm 90% booked and I, I can't fit anybody else. And now I can't even be sick because if I'm sick, I can't get my clients back in. Well, that means you're running the wrong type of business at that point. So you should right. underprice, right, right. underprice till you can't take it anymore. For the first five years, you should undercharge, I think, because if you're seven years in the business and you're still not busy, then you charge too much. You're not worth it. And that's just the way it is. Yeah, I, I, would, I would echo that and also say you also need to learn how to be a great marketer. And I, I mean that from a standpoint of, you know, the people who are fully booked are not necessarily the greatest cutters and colorists on planet Earth. They're the people who know how to market themselves well. And, I, and so, I mean, I agree with you in the sense of like, I, I'm a big fan, by the way. Like when I started out, even in coaching, by the way, if you coach yeah. with me 12 years ago when I started, you paid about a tenth of what it costs to work with me today. Yeah. Do I know more than I did 12 years ago? Of course I do. But my point is, is you would have gotten a really good deal if you would have worked with me if you were my first couple of clients versus now when we work with thousands of clients all over the world and I'm jumping on planes and going and doing stuff in all types of countries and all these other things. Like, of course, I'm charging way, way more for my advice because it's way more right. valuable. But you know why? Dude, that's because I can't. My calendar is so full. Every time my calendar is full, it's just a trigger for me to say, raise my prices. Right. Yeah. So two, two things I would just add to what you said. One is if you're, if, especially if you're a seven year stylist and like you still are not booked and you're like, why is my book not full? Maybe you're right. Maybe you need to lower your prices to kind of meet the market that you're in or, and by the way, two things you can do, lower your prices or get better at marketing. Those are really the only two things in my yeah. opinion, just to add the second that you could get better at is you need to get better at marketing or you need to lower your prices and see which fixes the problem. I personally being a marketer would say you need to learn to market your face off. But yes, there could be a, a reset but, in there. And then well, I would that, also say is as you get that 80%, then that's a good trigger change. You're good at marketing though. So like that's that's Correct. the thing. And a lot of people, so most hairdressers that are talented hairdressers are not busy because they're not good at marketing, but they're just not good at marketing, right? Most of the really talented yeah. hairdressers end up in education or they end up doing something else because they're not that busy behind the chair. They can't figure that part out. Uh, and then the people that are really good at marketing and not great at hair, they're really busy behind the chair because they're a great time. People love being around them. So there has to be the happy medium for me is where yeah. I lower prices because then you get more people taking the chance coming in and talking about you as a value and then start raising them as your reputation grows and you become this stylist with the name all over town. Now you don't have to market as hard. And, and now all of a sudden you, you know, you have that because like I was, I liked studying hair and I also liked the marketing side of it, but I'm definitely better mm -hmm. at, um, you know, actually, I don't know which one I'm better at. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know which one I'm not that I'm not the greatest <laughs> marketer, but I'm not the greatest hairdresser either. So, you know, there's, I think you have to find that happy medium, but I totally agree with what you're saying. 100%. I think the marketing yeah. has to be there, but you know, yeah, that's what I don't know. It's both. Know it's both, bro. And I, it's, both. it's all good. I'll, I'll say one other thing about that too, is the other, the other thing, if you're really worried about, um, you know, discounting yourself, cause I'm, I'm a big fan, by the way, I, I don't like discounts as much as I like valuing up. And what I mean by that is don't discount down value up. If you're worried about lowering your prices to fill your book, well, what if you just add some value added services, meaning, like, hey, you know, if you come in and get a cut in color, then we're going to do this free service or this free upgrade or whatever that is. In addition to, you can also add this service on. So there's lots of ways to kind of like, 
I think the real question is how do you give enough value yeah. to your uh, guest that sits in your chair, right? Is like what that really is, is it's the market giving you feedback to say the value that you're giving your guest is not as high as it needs to be. That can be done through discounting, that can be done through upgrading, or it can be done through positioning yourself as a as a better resource to get more people through the door of your salon. I mean, I think, dude, these are sure. all these are all real, real things. Yep, for sure. All right. Um, another, another question here. Yeah. What else is going on? By the way, keep your questions flowing, people. I love yeah. when Matt gets on this role of like asking fun questions and getting the stuff going. So please comment in the comment section. I'd love to see more from you guys. Yeah. And also make sure that you're sharing this because I like seeing the numbers going up, uh, as people are uh, watching. I shared it. You did? I, I, got, I, I don't know. I can't. Two more shares for you, Mr. Beck. <laughs> two more nice. shares I got you out of this deal, Matt. Uh, hey, thanks. I appreciate Every that. Every two shares counts. All right. Here it is. Roll, uh, oh, man. Sometimes the words all blend together. Oh. I'm just going to say this guy. Dude, this is, this this is the girl, best question. This guy. Uh, yes. I'm wondering. Santa Sha Beauty Bar. Good job. I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering. Santa Sha. Yeah. In all the tips I hear about building a business slash clientele, all the books and videos uh, from Jason Everett. Uh, how come nobody says get involved in your community? I only hear about social media marketing. So, oh, I know start. that one, dude. Yeah, th this one comes up all the time. I actually had I was on the line with somebody just the other day. I was I, I had a salon. It was uh four four women that were on the line with me, and they were asking me questions. And one guy was like, Jason, I know you teach so much on social media. I love it. I'm excited, and I want to work with you because we have this like social media crash course we do. And we're I'm actually I'll I'll, I'll seed something that's kind of cool we're working on. We're working on something called. Uh, a social media play day, which is how do you set up a day inside your salon? By the way, killer idea. How do you set up a day inside your salon where you like invite your favorite guests and you like do all these things and you might even invite a photographer and videographer down. So you capture like a quarter's worth of social media content in one day. So you don't have to like constantly ask every guest, Hey, do you want me to take, can I take a before and after picture? Like it's just, you put yourself in this thing. Anyway, we're working on this cool concept. That's a good, social media that's, play a, day. that's a good one. Uh, TM. Dude, it's super good, and we're we're working on a we're working on a. There's a little video for it. I've got a download that's coming, and we're working on like a whole in salon training thing. So anyway, don't steal the idea, but we'll Not collaborate. Right. Um, cool. What I would say is, is that this this idea and this. So anyway, I'm on the call talking to this gal, and she's like, "I love your social media stuff." I'm like, "Thanks, I appreciate that." And then there was this gal in the back, and she like she's like, "Hey, can I ask a question?" And she goes, "You know." I hate social media. I think that social media is a bunch of garbage. Nobody ever talks about anything besides social media. Jason, this is the one question. If you answer it right, I'll work with you. Okay, what, what is Whoa. your question? And she goes, is there, is there any way to promote your business besides social media? And I was like, hell yes. Like, <laughs> of course there is. Like, actually, that's how, like, by the way, that's what you should be doing. Like, this is kind of like bare minimum is making sure uh, that you're promoting yourself in lots of different ways. Yeah. So yes, of course, there's a lot of ways. The reason why social media is the big one, and I'll, I'll, I'll make this stand and then I'll go back and answer the question. But the reason why social media is the big one is because the amount of leverage that you have is massive. Meaning you can go on social media and like right now, Matt and I from our you know respective offices slash salons, right? Like we can be kicking it here and be in front of hundreds or thousands or you know way more people just by sitting here and social media is a great amplifier. However, I want to be clear that I do a lot of grassroots marketing and face to face. In fact, Matt, that's how you and I met is we were at a event promoting our stuff, what we do. And that was where we got connected. So there's yep. a lot of reasons for people to be plugged in for face to face. So let me give you some, some face to face things. Is that cool? Can I do that? Yeah. Drop some, sounds good. Yep. Drop some non-social media. So a uh, really simple, basic thing is what is the signage like in your salon and what does your building look like? Matt, you mentioned upgrading the interior. We talked about our homies over at Minerva. By the way, yeah. shout out to Jeff and Megan over at Minerva. Um, you know, you should look at updating the interior of the salon 100%. But when's the last time you updated the exterior of the salon and does it look inviting and exciting? If I could drive by your salon and nobody cares, like that's kind of a problem. Okay, so that's number yeah. one. The second thing is, do you have any signage outside of your salon? Like I know, Matt, your salon is like a standalone building. You're not like in a strip mall, right? No. I've never yeah. been. I just happen to see your, your videos, right? But like the other question is, is if you're in an area that has a lot of foot traffic and other activities and events, like do you have a, you know, this is very basic, but like a sandwich board sign that it goes out on the street, uh, either on the full road 
that has some sort of exciting offer that people could take advantage of, or even just right in your same shopping center? Is that something that you have in there? Because a lot of shopping centers, like you could go to a business every day that has a the coffee shop is right there, and you have a thousand people going to that coffee shop every single morning. Your salon is next door, but you don't have a sign up that does that. So that takes me to point number two, which is yeah. are you working out working out deals and arrangements with local businesses to promote what it is that you do? So I I'm a big fan of what are called joint venture partnerships. Me you are in a shopping center, your job as a salon owner, or you can even do this as a stylist, right? Your job should be to go out and create alliances with other businesses inside that shopping center and inside that, uh, that complex that you're in and see what are some complementary businesses that are there. So I, I love this one. Let's say there's a restaurant that's there inside your complex. Well, yeah. what I would do is I would go over to that restaurant and say, hey, um, we're in the same shopping center. I'd love to do some work with you guys. Are you open? Talk to the manager, talk to the owner and just say, here's what I'm thinking. I'd like to help because it'd be amazing if your staff looked their best every single day in the restaurant, right? You're a nice restaurant. You'd like to have that. So here's what we're going to do. We would like to offer every one of your staff members a discount to come over and do some work with us or a free upgrade or however you want to position it. We'd like to offer every single one of your, your staff this advantage. We'd also... Uh, like to be able to let people know about your restaurant for the guests that come into our salon. So would it be possible where it's like, you know, if anybody who gets their hair cut or gets their hair done at our salon, can we give them a free appetizer for your restaurant to encourage them to come over and visit you? Now notice I gave first, by the way. I give right. you a discount. I want to offer our so our, our guests inside of our salon, a, a incentive to come over to see you, you know, like a free appetizer or a free drinks or whatever it is, you know, one free drink or whatever. And then also, would you be open to the idea of in everybody's uh, receipt when they leave here, would you be open to giving them a whatever, $10 off retail or a, you know, free upgrade to a back massage as a part of a cutting service or whatever the thing is, would they be open to uh, getting free gel upgrades on their nails? Could be any of those things in every single uh, you know, uh, ticket that leaves here? Would you be open to that? If we, if we hooked you up, would you hook up us up? Now, yeah. that is grassroots marketing, in my opinion, at its absolute finest, and it's old school, and it freaking works, and it's amazing, and like that, that is one of the best things that you can do to like build alliances in your local city because it costs you zero dollars. Maybe go on vistaprint.com and get some business card little offers that are printed that just you know you slide in there. So cool, cost you 20, 30 bucks to get it done. Hire a designer on fiverr.com and get somebody to design it, or have your cousin who's good at graphic design do it. But like yeah. the amount of revenue that you can generate off doing a grassroots thing like that is massive, and that had zero to do with social media. Yep. It has everything to do with alliances and partnerships and things like that. And, and by the way, I've got dozens of more ideas like that. I just want you to know social media is the buzz. Everybody wants to know about it because it's the it's yeah. the quickest, but that doesn't mean it's the best for sure. Yep. And we had, so um, back when we were on Main Street, uh, we did a sandwich board and it was all about uh, free hair analysis. And we had these hair analysis cards. We did it on yeah. every client and it was free. Like you just walk in and we, there was always, there's always that stylist that, maybe they're new, maybe they're an assistant, or maybe if you're not that busy, whatever it is, you're trying to grow your clientele, um, free hair analysis, they come in, it's a consultation, but you're just going through their hair, talking about all the things that you could do to create benefits for their hair, products that they could use, um, coloring services that'll help, glazes, whatever it is. So you have that and you just keep a card and then yeah. you have all of their information when they leave on a card. So that's something that you can do. Yeah. Uh, we, we also did a... Um, you were talking about making a business card with a deal on it. We had, so yep. let's say a guest comes in and we're talking about adding on services. We had multiple business cards with different ideas on them. So it was, if a guest came in and they don't normally get a haircut, but you wanted to get them to get a haircut, then we had a card that would kind of push them. It was an incentive to get a haircut or a, a conditioning treatment. So if they never get a conditioning treatment, we say, here's a card for next visit. Let's book you in. I'm going to give you totally. a free... In, uh, add on conditioning treatment. And then that introduces people to new services. So there's like, there's so many different ways to go about things that have nothing to do with social mm -hmm. media, um, that market to your current clientele, but also to people walking by. Totally. So yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. I mean, dude, you know, you know, we're a big fan, like, you, you know, about our consultation board game that we created and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I would say that one of the things that we, um, we've done, I don't know if anybody else has seen that, but like, um, 
one of the things that we've done is we talked about this consultation and you, you talked about a hair analysis is we're a big fan of having a top to bottom consultation for hair so much so that we've literally created a board game about it. And it's one of those things that teaches people how to have a world-class consultation. And the idea was, is that you want to stand out in the marketplace. Most people walk into a salon and they go, how do you normally get your hair cut? Cool. Uh, right. how much do you want off the top that much? Okay, great. Uh, anything else? And it's like, yeah. what? Like, that's it? So, you know, our consultation game teaches, it's like, you know, what do you love about your hair? What don't you love about your hair? Um, you know, how have you had your hair style before? What products are you using at home? And it's this whole nine-step consultation that teaches people how to do this thing. And, and I think that most people miss out on that opportunity to have a real consultation because it, it leads you to being able to actually properly prescribe retail products for them. And I think it's an underutilized thing because so many people... Um, so many people don't actually offer a consultation inside the salon. They just offer haircuts and colors. Right. Like one of our one of our highest performing, and I'll go back to social media. But one of our highest performing social media ads is this idea that um, come in for a free makeover consultation, and it says, "Are you tired of your stylist asking you same thing as last time?" Well, then come in and check out our salon, and it's literally designed to you know take those mediocre salon people that are just kind of getting by and doing it that are boring. And yeah. take the, the, you know, say like, hey, if you're ready to mix it up, like our salon does full consultations from top to bottom. You know what I mean? It's huge. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. So, yeah. S sweet. So the last, uh, this isn't a question. I don't think I had any more questions. Hey, by the way, Matt, do you mind if I, uh, if I, if anybody wants information on the console game, if I drop the info out on that? No, please. Please do. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think I should have one behind me. Hang on a sec. I'm going to go out of focus. Going out of focus, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Uh, but dude, just, I know, right? But dude, check this out. Uh, I think it's in focus. It's called the consultation gamification. And I mentioned it, like I said, because it teaches those nine steps of consultation. If you want information on it, uh, all you have to do is uh, drop the word consultation and we'll try and figure that out. But check us out. It's got a full playing board on like, what are the nine steps of a good consultation? Uh, what comes up? Drama, distractions, all these things. And then it literally has like legit level playing cards that you can do inside your salon. And I know I'm in like plug pitch fest here, but stay with me. Um, is that dude, this, the idea is, is that literally, literally has playing cards for how to learn how to give this world-class consultation and how to cue you through the whole process. Um, we actually even created an in salon um, digital training video where it's me and my uh, one of my trainers on my staff where we actually teach you inside the salon how to run this consultation game and and have it be this really incredible thing. So it's a 90 minute in salon digital class that's really like interactive and exciting and all this stuff. So if you guys want information on our consultation game, do me a favor, drop the word consult or consultation down and I'll try and track down every humanly possible channel that Matt Beck has attacked with social media. But dude, yes. it's amazing. We've had people who've doubled their retail just because they've learned how to give a better consultation. And it's probably the one thing that you're not doing inside your salon that will help you make more money from getting clients to rebook, getting clients to buy retail is that, I mean, dude, talk about non-social media. That's free. It's easy. It's just asking better yeah. questions to your guests when they sit in the chair. You know what I mean? For sure. And I actually, I have that game and I, I still need to make a video about it. So I, I should, will work on oh, it. Well, here's the deal. Let's, uh, let's do this. I've got my digital in salon. I'll send you the digital in salon training so you can run your staff through it. Tell me if they hate it. I don't okay. think they will, but they are used to you. So, you know, let's, we'll have to see if my, if my training skills are up to speed to the hey. Matt Beck show <laughs> skill. Uh, hopefully it is. But anyway, dude, I'll send it to you and you can play it with your staff, but it's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Last question. So Ingrid uh, on Instagram says, is, is, is it good for business to ask Ingrid? for a deposit on big projects more than six hour, six hours? Do you, with your salons that Super you uh, coach, do you talk about uh, that with them? Yeah, we do a lot, actually. It's a really good question. Um, that comes up quite a bit inside of our group as people ask that question. They're like, do I charge deposits? What do you do? How big is the service? So there's kind of other layers to answer on that question of like, should you do a deposit? So I got to kind of answer some pre-questions first, okay? Is yeah. it again, I go back to what I talked about at the beginning of this podcast, which was what is your policy? So like you don't want somebody to book a four hour service and then call and cancel and call in sick, right? Like whether it's sick or they just cancel or any of that stuff. So 
in general, what is your policy? Which a lot of our salons have a policy where if it's a longer service, they do require sometimes a 25% deposit in order to book that much time with the guest, or I'm sorry, with their stylist. And then they also know if they cancel inside of 24 hours or 48 hours, again, you make the policy for your salon. And if you are the stylist, talk with the owner about how to make that policy. Um, <clears throat> is to say, if they cancel inside of 24 or 48 hours, that they forfeit their deposit. And you have to be clear with that relationship up front. So is it a good practice? Absolutely. Uh, you know, in today's day and age, are people distracted by a million things? Of course they are. So how do you make sure that on a regular basis, people are not blowing you off? Well, you put a policy in place. Another standard practice that I have for things like this, again, depending on the size of it in my company, is that we pay a lot of attention to what is the pattern and the trend. Meaning, if somebody cancels the first time, we give them a warning. Okay. But the second time, then we, uh, well, so after the first time, we alert them to the policy and say, hey, typically if you cancel inside 24 hours, there is a 25% cancellation fee. This is the first time you've ever done it. So I want to just clarify there will be no cancellation fee. But in the future, we're going to require a 25% deposit. And if for any reason you cancel inside that 24 hours, then there is that cancellation fee that will be applied because I can't rebook that time as your stylist or we can't rebook it. And I can't even use it because, you know, I'm booked, right? I'm 80% booked sometimes. So I think part of it is understanding what is the policy for the salon? Should you do it? Again, it should be salon wide. Uh, if you are independent, you can do whatever the heck you want. Obviously, you can just say that's my policy. But I recommend warning them the first time, giving them that charge warning, and then saying the second time that's it. And a lot of salons, you know, they have their credit card on file, so you can do it that way, depending on your software. But if not, that would mean that you then have to institute that policy of actually collecting a 25% deposit. Uh, at the time of booking the service. One of the last plug I want to give on there because online booking comes up as a big part of this also. Somebody yeah. books an appointment online and it's a three hour appointment that they booked online and then they cancel that. My policy that we talk about inside our academy is if somebody books an online appointment through your software, that's not a real appointment until it's been verified by your front desk or by you if you're doing it by yourself. But the idea is that's an, a, an appointment booking request Okay, so it's a okay. request for an appointment that then needs to get verified. The reason why that's so important is so many salons have switched over to online booking and they're like, it, they count it just like they booked with the front desk. But what if that guest didn't really know what they were booking? They thought they were booking for one thing, they booked for another. They don't know your terms of what you set up your online booking for. So make sure that your front desk calls, confirms, make sure they're on the same page and it makes a huge difference into um, what's going on for them. So hope that helps a little bit. That's actually a really good call on online booking because I think a lot of people just yeah. leave that appointment in. I think we even do that here. We don't call <clears throat> yeah. to uh, confirm. I don't think totally. we do. We could, but um, that's that's not a policy that we put it's in a, place. Quick, I, quick tip, man. Quick tip. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Uh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh, cool. You got anything else? Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> <laughs> it's just that delay. I was just going to say, I mean, going, going back to this idea of like, what's the general policy? I'm just a big fan of like, people get a free pass. You know, it's like, same thing. I, I want to mention like, what if clients are late? What if you have them down for a, you know, a, a, an hour appointment, they show up 10 minutes late because they were over at Starbucks, you know, waiting in line. They're like, oh, sorry, you understand. <laughs> right. Like, you know, what, what's the policy on that? And I'm this, I have the same thing as like uh, for clients being late. Um, meaning that if for some reason, like they're running late, you got to let them know like, Hey, just so you know, I'm booked super tight today. And so today I'll be able to make this happen. But if in the future you show up late and again, I'm just putting this out here, you might want to say, um, if you're more than five minutes late, I won't be able to take you for an appointment right? Like, just so you know, yeah. like for future, that will be the case. Um, but here's the deal. If you're going to enforce a late policy like that for your guest, guess who else can't be late? You, you can't, That's, you can't say, yeah. Oh golly, I was running behind today. And so sorry, I got to make you wait an extra 15 minutes. That's fine. Right. And that's yeah. why people don't enforce policies. And this, this goes back, like, I hope I can put a bow on this whole thing, Matt, is this goes back yeah. to the whole thing we've been talking about today is you know, well, what if my guest is sick? I can't allow them to come in. Well, same thing. You can't be sick cutting their hair. They can't be sick coming in. You've got to enforce the policy on both sides. So what is the policy for you? What is the policy for the guest? And I think this is where most people don't run a salon like a business. They run it like a hobby is they don't have policies. They don't have procedures. And so they're literally making it up every single day. And they're worried that they're like, well, I made up this policy and it's going to be like this for a minute. And clients are not going to like me. Yeah. Cause you're not running it like a business. You need to run it like a business by having policies in place for these things in advance. Nice.
That's the one I, I, I really did I wrap love. It? Did I bring it yeah, back? You did. You did. Um, that's <laughs> the thing we talked about last last time about. I don't know if it was cancellation policies or what, but um, the basically like as a stylist, you need like we're adults, right? So we mm-hmm. need to we need what? to take right. We need to take responsibility. We need to speak up first off. If somebody's late too much, then you got to yeah. speak up about it. Um, if like. But what I see too much is people getting frustrated about clients, but then not looking in the mirror at themselves, right? Like I, for some no. reason have, I have no, um, if a client's late, like I don't care, like the day always works itself out. Um, like no matter mm-hmm. what you might have one late, but then all of a sudden one, like one's early, but like everything just works out. You yeah, just got to work hard. Um, but I think people are too afraid to be a little bit uncomfortable. And like a little bit pushed. Mm. And I think we need to like just become adults in that situation, make, create a policy. But what I like about the thing that you said last podcast, and you kind of reaffirmed it this time, we just switched it with sick and cancellation, all that is that mm-hmm. the stylist has the same responsibility as the client does. So if the client yep. um, totally. cancels, then, you know, then there might be a deposit that has to be paid or whatever it is, whatever your policy right. is. But also as a stylist, if you cancel, if you call in sick or you do these things and you put out that client, yeah, what's their, what do they get out of that? Yeah, they should get something too. And that was something that struck. And I right. talked to Christina about it because I'm like, you know, as we're working on this cancellation policy here, I want to make sure that the client is the number one um, focus for us as a team, right? So me and Christina are salon right. owners. So obviously you've got the whole, you know, our staff is very important. And then the client. So if you take care of your staff, they'll take care of the clients. You got that whole thing, right? But when it comes down to it, Mm -hmm. us and the staff, all of us, we're a team. And the number one thing is that is that client in the chair. So are we being held just as responsible on both ends? So I think when you put together your cancellation policy, sick policy, all that, I totally agree with the fact that the stylist should be just as accountable and the salon owner and the salon mm-hmm. as the client is on that way around. And I think it makes it a softer thing. So if you yeah. say to the client, if you call in sick or if you, if you cancel your appointment, you know, we're going to take your, uh, your deposit. But also if we cancel your appointment, we're going to, you'll get a free upgrade. Yeah. You'll get a free upgrade. The next time that you're here, yep. we'll, we'll upgrade you for free to a chem system, to a conditioning treatment, to whatever yeah. you get a free upgrade, or we'll give you this much to use on retail as an apology for us wasting your time. So exactly. you can't, you can't be on your horse and say I'm high and mighty and I I'm above the rules, but you have to follow the rules. It's a yeah. two way street. You have to create rules that are enforceable in both directions. And that's, we do that inside our Academy by creating something called the code of honor systems and policies. Like there's so many cool things that exist inside having a plan for it. And if you don't have a plan for it, like start making it up or get involved with a group like our group or another group that can start giving you some of those details because if you don't have help and you're just winging it and you like salon owners often, like you said, Matt, is you got to like, it's you and your wife. You're like, I got to talk to you know her and say, what do we want to do? How's it going to work? Like in our academy, what's cool is people literally ask everybody in our academy. They say, hey, what do you guys do? And then they can help use that policy from other salons, which is like, dude, I wish I was the smartest person in the room. But if I'm really honest, I just happen to work with hundreds of other really smart salon owners. And we've just already worked to solve these problems before. Yeah. So you've heard them and that's like, that's the, Dude, the benefit to being a part of it. Yep. So, um, so how do people, I just shared your link on all the stuff so you don't have to worry about the game thing. Um, Sweet, so dude. anybody, yeah, thank anybody you. that's interested in the game, I shared it on all the channels. So you'll see the link. Um, if anybody wants to be a part of it, like I could literally talk to you all day. If anybody wants to be a part of your, uh, Academy, your program, how do they get uh, more information? Yeah. Yeah, dude, if you guys want information about checking us out, and by the way, I just want to say this, we're not for everybody. Uh, so like, don't be offended if you apply and we say it's not the right fit at this time. Uh, we're really for salons that want to grow quickly. So if you're a salon owner and you run a commission salon and you're looking to have a team, meaning you're looking to have three, five, 10, 50 people, multiple locations, whatever you want to do, that's the right type of person who should apply to work with us. Um, we have a really cool video that'd be worth watching. Like it's not a pitch. It's just check out what we do. Um, it's, it's, I'll send you the link for that too, Matt, but it's a uh, high Can you play uh, it on your can screen? Can I play it? What do you mean? On your screen. Uh, you well, it's, it? I have a, like a, it's a 27 minute video. 
but yeah we got um, time there's yeah <laughs> let's not watch that but i'm just saying it's a 27 minute video okay. that like gives you an overview of what we're about uh it, yeah it's, i don't have like a quick commercial you can't make it, but, that 27 um, seconds <laughs> I, yeah, I wish, but dude, uh, yeah. it's, it's watch right. it, see if you like what we're about. And then if it makes sense, you can apply to talk with somebody on our salon acceleration team, which is basically our job is to help you get more done in the next six months than you probably have in the last six years. And if that's you, you're like, I just want some help to speed up my process as a commission salon owner. Let me know if you run a, you know, if you, if it's just you and you have maybe an assistant, that's probably not the right thing to chat with us. We have some cool things for you, but if you're a commission salon, you really want to know how to do it. Dude, thanks. And I'll, I'll pop that in the comment and have you send that out to Matt. But dude, just go watch that free training. And if you like it, apply to talk with somebody on our team. That'd be awesome. And uh, hopefully you got some value out of just being here. I want I want to be clear. My goal is to give as much value for free because I know I can't work with everybody. And our mission with the High Performance Salon Academy is to elevate the entire industry. So let's just keep sure. doing that, Matt. That's why I love being here with you because you do that so well every day, brother. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm so happy that you uh, agreed to do this again. Let's do it again, maybe yeah. in a month or so. Why not? So um, everybody, good. let's do it. Go check out Jason's stuff for sure. And at least follow him on social because he's putting out, he puts out free content uh, a lot. So if you guys just want to get to know him a little yeah. bit better and see what he's doing. Um, but, you know, I, I always love keeping up with what you what you got going on. So thanks so much, thanks, pal. Bro. I'm going to hang up on you and I'm going to end this thing. But uh, thanks for thanks. being a part of it. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks for doing what you do, bro. All right, guys. Thanks for being a part of the podcast again. Uh, like always, I enjoy doing this. I'd love to hear if you guys like uh, this podcast. Um, I know I'm well aware that you guys love seeing hair videos. You love seeing the hair cutting things, all of that stuff. I love it too. I love creating it. But I also, this is the most important part of the salon business. Whether you agreed with everything that was said today on the podcast you, we can all agree that there's a lot of conversations that need to happen to help grow this industry, to make it bigger and better. Um, and, you know, having these conversations helps and having you guys on live. I love seeing you guys on here. A lot of you guys stuck in, um, even though we were talking business the whole time, uh, really appreciate it. So if you love seeing these podcasts, please let me know uh, in the comments uh, that you do because I like seeing that it's encouraging to keep this going every week. And then also make sure you share this and tag me in it because any of these clips, uh, any of this video that we can get out there and just make it more obvious that this is important in the industry that all helps. So uh, with that being said, thank you to MinervaBeauty.com. They do, uh, they're the biggest supporters of this podcast. They've been a supporter for about five years of my podcast ventures. Um, the beauty industry needs to wake up to podcasts and understand that the real hairdressers listen to these things um, out there. So uh, check out Minerva Beauty. They have a fly-in program. If you're looking for, uh, you wanna see furniture in person, they'll up, they'll uh, actually pay for your airfare up to $350 if you buy $5,000 worth of furniture, uh, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, and they have uh, the best prices in the industry. So if you're looking for that upgrade, make your salon look great, treat your guests right, and you'll be more successful in the salon. I see all of your uh, comments. I see all of it. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. And uh, Jason, thank you for being on the show. Let's end this day. It's going to be a great day, guys. Thanks for being a part of it. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way It's gonna be a great day